there's the cabin heat box attached to the firewall it's held on there pretty good We've got the three screws in this is the flapper this uh, opens up like this to allow air to go in to the cabin the heated air and, uh, and it closes and that closes it off and then air the flow can come out through here through the side uh, to escape to, to vent well, that's on there. You got a little that little gasket on there seals it up. Um, gonna have to route the um, cable, the cabin heat cable, up and around and into the uh, cockpit, into the cabin. And here's the defroster box. Uh, that worked out pretty good, mounting it like that. It'll uh, be able to get it off. One person will be able to take it all off. That little plate goes down in behind this V and this box just clears that plate a little bit there. And you can see your feet go right here and so that sticks out far enough that that gets the air when you do turn it on for cabin air, for cabin heat, the air gets by your feet so it doesn't scorch them so bad when it's on. And then we'll have a tube on here going up and that'll go into the glare shield into the upper boot cowl for the for the windshield. Okay, the next little project would be to mount the gas collator and that goes right here. The bracket bolts on here and then the gas collator itself just hooks into the bracket with a wire a bale. Well, the mounting bracket for the gas collator is fitted up here on the firewall. The gas collator of course hangs down here below the firewall so it's got a drain, quick drain on it so that you can drain it. Um, it collects the crap that comes out of the fuel line, the water and stuff like that. But there's a problem with that. This screw right here, the bottom one, uh, bangs into, interferes with the elbow when I put the uh, top of the gas collator in there. That screw sticks out so far that uh, that it hits actually hits the the male portion of the elbow. I've got all these nuts mounted up on here with a large uh, washer and I'd like to keep those all to the inside but I can see that's not going to work. So the first thing to do is to take that bottom screw out, this one that's interfering here, take it out and uh, see if we can get uh, uh, the screw turned around. Now this is the one that's interfering right here and uh, I'll take it out and swap it around. I'll have to put an AN363 nut on there because the nut then will be exposed into the engine uh, well. But I've got to watch to make sure that that doesn't stick out so far that it uh, interferes with this gas collator and it mounts up there too. Well I changed that screw out of there and uh, I put a half inch one in instead of a, or a, a three eighths inch screw in instead of a, a half inch. And I wish that it had a seven sixteenths, but I was lucky to get what I got on these. I've just barely got enough thread sticking out of there, but it does have enough clearance that I can put this uh, gas collator in there. Um, actually, I could go ahead and put the longer screw in there, and it would be fine. I don't like those nuts sticking out on this side. I'd rather have everything all on the same side. So we've got clearance between that head of that screw now and the uh, and the fitting. And I'll have to get the nut on there and see if that'll fit on there like that. So I took that fuel line off of there and uh, got it out of the way. It's going to be a lot easier to flare and put that nut on it and stuff to flare that uh, fuel line with it over on the bench that it would be in here in the fuselage anyway. Now this uh, rudder pedal is getting a little bit irritating here in the way so I get a piece of safety wire and just pull it back where it's out of the way. Now we've got a, a nut and uh, this is just a, a plug, a cap for a line, um, but it, it's the same size as a, as a nut. I'll 
put it on there and that's going to fit on there just fine. And that's going to have clearance between that screw head and the nut. There, there's where that thing's going to be, so that's going to be okay. And you can see that nut in there. It's got plenty of clearance between this. Uh, actually, this thing will fit out just about like that. And so that nut has plenty of clearance there. And there's actually clearance to put longer screw through there, which I think I'm going to go ahead and put that half inch screw through there. That one just doesn't have quite have the number of threads sticking out through that locking portion as I would have liked. I took that 3 8 inch screw out of there and put a half inch screw in there and I've got plenty of clearance on that. I actually put a, a thin washer on there and the only reason I put a thin washer on there is because I couldn't find a regular washer. I think I'll go ahead and pull that other lower one out and swap it around and I think I'm going to go ahead and leave these top two in there with the screws. Uh, on the outside here just because those down in there there's not much chance of getting down in there and scratching your hand on it or anything but these two sticking out on the top there's still a possibility of uh, uh, maybe scratching your hand or hanging up something on those you get to work it out here on the firewall now this is the gas collator this is what fits there on that bracket we just put on the airframe uh, this is of course the top of it and you've got outlet and inlet fuel comes in goes down through this uh, opening here into this little pot this little chamber and uh, then there's a screen here that has got to go back up through to the outlet and that keeps screens out all the crap that comes in the fuel and then it goes to the outlet and uh, to the uh, carburetor. Um, now this was the outlet that it had on there. It's just a uh, number six, three eighths inch uh, nipple uh, with a eight or a three eighths inch pipe fitting. It fit in there. That's a 45. This little fitting here goes in the top, and that's where the um, primer line gets its fuel from. It sucks fuel up through there, goes through the primer, and then gets pushed into the engine. So that's just an eighth inch um, inverted nipple there. Fitting. This is the female fitting. And then the in inlet here that had this piece of bright uh, brass nipple in there. And then it had this big uh, fitting on there, which is a uh, automotive or household fitting, whatever, just a standard uh, tubing fitting. It's got a reverse flare on it, and that's what it went into before. I'm c converting that over to this. It'll have a, an AN aluminum fitting on it. It's an elbow. It's got an AN6 uh, fitting on this end and a, and a 3 8 inch pipe fitting on there that'll go into that. Now that had these fittings in there and it looked like, of course, pipe fittings have got to have some kind of sealant around it and it looked like they would just put Permatex gasket sealer around all those. It was black and kind of ugly looking and although it worked, um, but I decided I wanted to, to clean this up a little bit and see it's got a little bit of corrosion right, it's right there, a little bit uh, through the anodizing right there, but it's anodized. I didn't want to sandblast it, take the anodizing off of it, or, or run any abrasives on it to take the anodizing off of it. I wanted to clean up that gookum pucky they had in there. Uh, looked kind of nasty. I tried getting those fittings out here, and this one is not a standard uh, size. It, uh, you'd think it'd be 7 8 or or 7 sixteenths or 3 eighths and either one would fit it. Uh, 7 sixteenths is too big and 3 eighths is too small. Well I took it down to the shop and I tried the metric wrenches on it and they didn't fit. The 10 was too small and 11 was too big. Uh, I wound up using a crescent wrench on that to get it out. That came out pretty good. This on the other hand that was in there pretty tight. That was mucked in there pretty good. I couldn't get it with a wrench. I normally use a 9 16 on this, but 
9 16 is just a little bit big and those have already been uh, squished over a little bit there deformed a little bit on that flat so I wound up using the crescent wrench on that too and had to really turn to get it out but I'd set this up in the soft jaws on the um, bench vise down there in the shop I've got a ultrasonic cleaner that we bought years ago several years ago at to Harbor Freight and I've never really used it. Well, I've set it up down there in the shop and I've got paint thinner in it. We're not supposed to use solvents in it, just supposed to use water detergent or something like that, but I, I put paint thinner in it and then I soak this in there for a little while and that really helps soften that gookum pucky up quite a bit more than um, if I would let it set overnight it probably softened it up pretty good but uh, the bubble bubbles, the scrubbing bubbles uh, work pretty good to soften that up and let everything come out a lot better. So anyway the way this works is of course you got this screen that goes in there that uh, screens that. There's a gasket here that goes in there. And I've got new gaskets that one's kind of brittle and then we've got this little pot that fits on there like that and it's got a quick drain fitting on there so you can drain the drain the fuel out of it because the crap water and stuff like that collects in this and you drain that every day as part of the pre-flight of the air of the airplane. Um, so this fits into that bracket by using this little um, bale right here. This bale goes in there, and then this fits on there like that. And this screw goes in there and tightens that up and pushes this um, basket. This uh, chamber here up against this gasket to make a seal and then this has a little hole in it so it can be safetyed. Now this thing is the only piece on there, this nut that was pretty tight on there and this nut has got some pitting and stuff in it was rusty everything else is in pretty good shape. Now, I was thinking about powder coating that I didn't do it, I still may but I, I did put it on the wire wheel and cleaned it all up and cleaned the threads up you had to turn that with a with a pliers to get that to open to turn before. None of this is going to go on there right now because that hangs down below the firewall and that would just get a uh, chance of getting damaged. Okay, we've got uh, everything finished up there on the fuel line now, finally. Uh, put the flare on the fuel line, got the bushing in there and the nut, and then here's the gas collator piece here. So I've got to put a plug or a cap over that end there to protect the threads on it and stuff while it gets in case it gets banged around while everything's being moved around. So I can go install this now in the in the airplane. Um, I'll have to hook this up using this bale and uh, run it through there and then I'll put this fuel line back on there um, and hook it up here to the nipple and that should be the end of the fuel stuff in a fuselage anyway. I still have to Run the, of course we've got a flexible fuel line that goes from here to the carburetor and I still have to make up the primer lines. And, well there's the gas collator installed on its mount. Of course I don't have the rest of it on there, the, the collator part of it, but that's the, the head, the main fitting. This is the little bale that holds it in there in that uh, mount. So that's all on there pretty good. I like that. Here's the fuel line hooked up to the gas collator. It's all nice and tight. It had to do a little change in the bend there, but uh, otherwise it uh, worked out pretty good. I just had to take take the bend out a little bit and, and tighten it, or uh, change a little bit so I had a little bit more room to get it over here closer to this firewall. Here's the fuel line as it goes up. I've got a mount for it right here. Uh, hooked onto the uh, this diagonal where it goes down. That's a fuel proof clamp right there and uh, that'll hold it and keep it from vibrating too much and hold it steady. Now there's the main lines. This is a battery cable and and uh, that stuff that goes down here right past it and I can there's plenty of room between there the fuel line and the and the battery cable. I can stick my finger in there between them so that's not a, a problem, but I put some of that uh, plastic anti-chafe guard on there 
just in case um, something happens and this uh, line gets pushed there so it doesn't abrade. There's where it hooks up into the fuel selector valve. Um, you're going to get that bend around that um, main diagonal there, that main strut that goes up and uh, fits into the fuel valve right there. So that should be the last time that's taken on and off. Put a little bit of fuel lube on the threads and on the male uh, portion of that uh, fitting where it sticks out there on both this one and, and on the gas collator just to help seal it up a little bit, uh, make it a little softer where it goes in there and lube it up. So now I'll put my turnstile on there, my rotisserie back on there and, and then I can work some more on this firewall. I've got some of my lines run through already here. Um, get the throttle here and figure out where that, if that's where that's going to go or not. I can get the voltage regulator and stuff set up on there. Now figure out where they go and bolt them, mount them on there.